the S-10 computer, why does the government deny it exists? The Freddy campaign, why is Special Branch after them? The video net screen, could it be a spy in your living room? Come and have a look, quick! Good evening. A secret computer database containing personal files on more than 20 million people in Britain has been penetrated by computer hackers. Confidential information about people's private lives came online to video net screens all over the country. The source of the information is a computer the government has always said doesn't exist. The Home Secretary assured Parliament that he had not authorised the collection of the information. Responsibility for the leak has been claimed by the Campaign for the Freedom of Digital Information. It's essentially a collection of like-minded people who believe that the power of knowledge, in particular digital knowledge, is, is so powerful that it shouldn't be restricted to particular classes of people. The Home Office are treating the leak as a serious breach of national internal security. So welcome to the information age, the world in which everything they ever promised you about the communications revolution came true. The ultimate result will be to encourage and facilitate world trade, education, entertainment, and many kinds of professional, political, and personal discourse, which are essential to healthy human relationships and international understanding. If I could get the name of a flower shop in Paris, if I could find out what the pound was worth in French francs today, if I could send money anywhere in the world at the touch of a button, I wonder what flowers I should send out. Oh la la! Videonet, join the global village. Now take a world which is interconnected by telecommunications in which there are lots of large computers providing lots of data to people for good economic reasons. Storage is no problem. Machine translation for this material is no problem. If machines can do it, let machines get on with it. But at that point, you know, we throw the social system up for grabs. Let me show you something of my little patch of the global village some of the faces of the information revolution that nobody ever told us about. And remember, I'm not claiming that this is your future. This world of mine is only one of an infinite number of different turns history could have taken. This is the one in which everything technology offered was snapped up with no questions asked. If we'd only thought in 1980, if we'd only taken time, and not so much the time, but just put the effort in to do some thinking, and instead of just ploughing along, along our own motorways of thought, without actually seeing where we were going, we could have saved ourselves an enormous amount of trouble. Videonet subscribers all over Britain found the contents of a secret official database appearing on their screens this morning. A computer, apparently called S10, contains private and personal information on more than 20 million people. The details include their life history, their educational, medical and criminal records, as well as their voting behaviour in the last four elections. A major operation was mounted in London to find out how the S10 computer's contents came to be linked to the Videonet network. A spokesman at the Central Videonet Switching Centre said that so far they had no idea how the system was broken into. Come on, come on, stop blaming the equipment. It is the equipment. <laughs> In the beginning was the word, and the word was on computer, controlled with a keyboard on cable. But the cable could lead to the next room, or to the next building. It 
could be an ordinary telephone line. Leading to another town. Or to another country. Then computers were linked underground by fiber optic cable. Or in the sky by satellite. The JNet was connected to the Euronet, the Euronet connected to the TimeNet, the TimeNet made an enormous change to society when it first came out. And the change that it made was really rather different from the way that people expected that it would make the change. They saw originally that everyone would work at home and they'd all sit at home, they'd uh, not bother to come into work at all because they could get all the files they needed, they could communicate with anybody that they needed to. They could make decisions, they could implement those decisions. All of the infrastructure seemed to be there to make office blocks unnecessary and redundant and the tea lady a thing of the past. So they threw away the telephone books and gave everybody terminals instead. They encouraged us to throw away our pens and our paper and write letters with a keyboard onto an electronic screen. And they tried to persuade us that books belong to history and should be buried with the past. What's emerging is a new kind of library with a new structure of knowledge built into it. And in due course, that's bound to change our attitude to knowledge. Once the way of handling information changes, the whole scene changes. The nature of the newspaper, the library, the publishing business, all of them are transmuted. In a world in which Anthony Smith's prophecy came true, the library has become a museum of books. Nobody thought that changing over from old-fashioned bound paper to electronic data networks would make any difference. The same information is just stored. We came to believe that poems, stories, railway timetables, scientific papers are all the same stuff. Just information. And it comes in bits. You can measure and calculate. And we found that information was just another commodity. Like coal in the machine age. You can buy it, you can sell it. And it makes things run. The new power is not money in the hands of the few, but information in the hands of the many. Hello? Yes, good afternoon. You'd like to check on a chemical you've found in your garden shed? Certainly. No, you'll have to spell that one for me, I'm afraid. OK, I'll have to do a computer search on that. All the information's held on a system in Geneva. How much is it going to cost? Well, there's a basic charge of £2.75 and then there's a charge for access to the system of £1.50 and the call charges are 35 pence for the first minute and 5p for every 20 seconds, so let's say it's going to take about five minutes. Businesses want information to keep up with the competition. Scientists to keep up with research. Farmers to keep up with the weather. And politicians to keep up their spirits. But somehow in the process of change, we started having to pay for what used to be free. Knowledge is now somebody else's expensive and exclusive private property. I can still get it. From this machine, I could browse through the catalogue of the Australian National Archive or the Library of Congress in America. I could look up a three years old article in the Hindustan Times or read last year's dispatches from the new China News Agency. Or I could find the time of the next train to Edinburgh. But it would cost, and more than many of us could afford. 
Right, all that lot together, that's going to be around nine pounds. You're not interested? No, I can't look it up on a book, sir. This is a library, not a museum. No, information is cheap, sir. It's the time taken to get it that's expensive. Strange that in an age of information, a lot of people have to do without it. Investigations are still going on to trace the source of today's video net security leak. An amateur videotape claiming to be a statement from the Campaign for the Freedom of Digital Information has been received by the Press Association. We demand the abolition of private possession of information of any kind. We demand the removal of all copyright laws and agreements. The right to know is a basic human right. In Parliament, there was concern both about the secret collecting of information and about the organisation which brought it to light. They have done it by breaching government computer security. The Home Secretary told the House they had not yet been able to determine who had been responsible for agreeing to set up the computerised system. But let me assure the House that at no time did I myself agree to the implementation of this database. Order. Would the right honourable gentleman not agree? Would, would he not agree? At the very least, his department has demonstrated the most extraordinarily gross incompetence in permitting this computer spy system to be set up at all, and, and, and having done so, in allowing a clandestine organisation to break in where its own officers apparently fear to trade. Politics has always been about information, because without it, you can't really make any decisions, can you? And that really is the electorate. They can't make a decision without information. And it's the government, too. They can't make decisions without information. So, round about the 1950s, 1960s, when computers got started, and you could analyse great big chunks of information, at that point in time, opinion polls started to arise. Then, in the 1980s, uh, President Reagan got himself elected by running, at the time, the most sophisticated of the computer systems. He polled 24 hours a day using computers in, in, in Utah, Salt Lake City. They ran what-if questions. What if we invaded Grenada? What if we sent a peacekeeping force into Iran? What if we did the following? What if we, 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 we put up taxes? And using the what-if questions, they designed policy. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack? If you want to change someone's political ideas, if you know enough about them and you feed them with the right information and you cut out the information that is against that, then you can change the way in which they think and the way in which they act politically. A government which knows enough about the way in which its people think and which can change the information which they get, can alter their desires and what they think correct and what they want to do and uh, get them to think and decide the way the government wants. The pound, is it too high, too low or is it just right? What do you think? A government survey on foreign exchange rates is on video net page 256. Please register your answers by midnight. This process may destroy the fragile consensus on which the democratic process depends. Technology is a political instrument and becomes an end in itself. Power will move towards the controllers of technology and away from a poorly informed and increasingly apathetic electorate. Investigations continue to find the source of this morning's video net leak. Plainclothes police entered the home of civil rights campaigner Harold Larson this afternoon and took away documents and electronic equipment. Two years ago, Mr. Larson was acquitted of a hacking offence after he admitted penetrating a private computerised employment blacklist. Tonight, Mr. Larson is still helping the police with their inquiries. When the hackers and the campaigners for civil liberties join forces, it marks the beginning of a powerful new movement.
great houses and dingy bedsits, voices are being raised in opposition to the way in which we're all being spied on and controlled. The campaign for the freedom of digital information. Is this the equipment that hacked the S10? Well, um, I'd rather not comment on that. But what I can say is that this equipment is similar to the equipment used. Um, basically, one just needs a bit of common sense. And one uses the fact that government computers tend to be five years out of date anyway. So there's no real problem about that. What we have are people working with computers joined onto the network, which is necessarily the government's network. Um, so the government is obviously attempting to track us down. The reason they don't, or rarely do, is because the actual information never resides in one place. It actually is moving over the network all the time. We're going to have to live with the creativity of the hacker. In the same way as today, we have to live with the creativity of the illegal car parker. Whatever systems we devise, people get round them. Whether it's waving large bundles of notes, or, as the joke has it, carrying fake car clamps, or as you can do in the Far East, when they clamp your car, a little boy will come along and for a few pounds will take the clamp off so you can drive away. People will proceed to try and beat the system. And I have unbounded faith in the ability of the human race to go on beating the system. Sam, you can't get to the opera. Those geeks change the dial up again. So listen, cover your tracks real good till you get Viking on a clean line. Start over if you get any parody hits. I usually do Dexter Revo UPSS. Hit the packet and go for a high speed out dial in C. 312. There's a real sweet extender there. Never gets bitchy at 2400. Same ITPW, it'll take you right in. Tentacles of the information machine spread everywhere. It's the most complicated system of technology ever devised. So tangled and interlinked that a human brain couldn't keep it all in mind. That's its greatest weakness. For in spite of all the safeguards, the secret codes and passwords, the dedicated hacker will spend endless days and sleepless nights patiently exploring the uncharted connections. And now and again, in a distant, overgrown, long neglected corner of the computer jungle there'll be a forgotten doorway and once inside thirty eleven thirty seven conviction for non-payment of library fine pleaded guilty 22nd march i saw this patient at the request of don man early satisfied all infirmary declared he put one in regular point of pain, pain last one and a half years. One in regular point of pain, pain last one and a half years. Relapse. 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 On examination, Relapse. 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 there is a swelling of language. Relapse. On examination, Relapse. there is a swelling of language. Relapse. 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 The first items of information to be entered on a computer are on actually the notification of birth form. This is actually filled in not by the doctor but by an official of government. Um, other items of information are collected uh, in employment, in paying taxes, in uh, receiving benefits from government. When you go to a bank, the transaction is monitored when you enter the country or leave the country, the machine-readable passport is an, as a document which can actually tell the computer whether you've left or whether you're entering and what time you've entered or left. The police have extensive powers of, of, of search. They can stop people on the street and demand information. In my world, a street isn't a safe place. Walls don't just have ears. They have eyes.
A camera scanning faces to compare with its catalogue of persons known to the police. An automatic number plate reader, cycling 24 hours a day through its list of cars to under observation. Machines log all phone calls. To whom, from whom, time and content. Pinpointing the caller to within a few hundred yards. Go to a cash dispenser and the transaction is recorded with account number, date and hour. Spend plastic money, and time and place and exactly what you bought are on the record. Visit the doctor, draw the dole, pay your tax. You're on the file. As somebody once said, you can run, but you can't hide. Would you mind stepping this way, please, sir? Clear off. Clear off. Name? Powell. Powell what? Robert. Address? 106 Cardozo Street, NE16. Personal identification number? Double 101248R. There's no record of any such person. Was it Powell, Robert, or Roberts? Robert Powell. All right, it checks. But let me give you a word of advice, Robert Powell. When you're out in the street, go straight to where you're going and don't loiter. Get it? Go on, then. We have very little safeguard against people being included in the file for reasons which the public, if they could know of them, would consider to be grossly unsatisfactory. The government has always said that it must have a streamlined bureaucracy to be efficient. And using this argument, their administrators and bureaucrats have established their computer networks. Unfortunately, what has suffered, suffered in that process is the concept of privacy because privacy to the bureaucrats was something that got in their way. It wasn't something which they should be worried about. They use the information for uh, a whole number of purposes to actually to govern the people themselves and also to police the people and to find out those who are um, people who should be labeled as suspicious or suspects for whatever reason and those who shouldn't be labeled as suspects. Information about you is your own. You own it like you own your bicycle or a car or whatever else. Unfortunately, the law hasn't actually recognized this point. And if someone takes information which is yours in that sense and uses it without your permission, the law will try and correct this by using copyright or the Data Protection Act, which is a kind of registration activity. Now, what they ought to be using is something like plain theft, because stealing your information is the same as stealing your car or your bicycle. One of the complications comes in from the fact that uh, the people who try and apply the law are in themselves uh, thinking that they're in the right when, when they do this illegal act. Um, but a policeman stealing your bicycle is no better than anyone else. What I do think is that the framework for Orwell's malevolent Big Brother society was established in the early 70s through to the early 80s. There was no legislation designed to control that sort of society coming about. 
and it came about through administrative fiat. It came about because government found that it could actually run its operations better and more efficiently in, by establishing uh, something which looks to all intents and purposes like Orwell's malevolent Big Brother Society. Investigations continue into Freddy, the organization claiming responsibility for breaching government security by breaking into a secret computer network. Police say that they are following a number of leads, but that no arrest is imminent. Our legal correspondent reports that although the leak happened in full view of the public, it will be difficult to find evidence to prove that an illegal act actually took place. We demand the cessation of all covert surveillance on innocent members of the public. We demand that all secret computer files be opened to inspection. The right to privacy is a basic human right. The automation of intolerance is an alarming prospect. We shall, whether we like it or not, lose some degree of our present privacy concerning personal information. The computerized society will have to become a much more tolerant society than most societies of the past, if true freedom is to survive. In the early 1980s, we did have the opportunity for establishing legislation for the first time which actually enshrines in law the right of personal privacy regarding information. Um, we fluffed it. I said at the beginning that this isn't a picture of your future world, so there really isn't any moral to this story. All I can say is that wherever there's a new technology, there are new opportunities. And wherever there are new laws, there are new crimes. The only question is, who takes the opportunities? And who decides what's to be a crime? <laughs>